Sif, Sif, Sif. Well, Shalom again. Uh, another day. Another chance to uh, keep the Lord's commandments and uh, get right with Him. Maybe to preach His Word. Um, today I just want to talk about uh, relationships. And uh, it just seems that... Uh, let's start with the Catholic Church. Um, even though there is a great, not controversy, I mean, there's concrete claims that, um, and admitted claims, of course, um, that the Catholic clergy are um, committing homosexual acts and also various uh, murder charges um, for girls um, who've come into contact uh, with Catholic priests and died. And uh, there was one such charge a few years ago in Glasgow and uh, I'm sure around the world. Um, it came in in the 10th century that uh, the Catholic priests couldn't marry. And uh, this was actually warned about um, by the apostles that uh, doctrines of devils would come in in the last days and they would forbid marrying. It's actually written in the New Testament. I'll try to leave the scriptures in the toolbar below. So I've witnessed friends um, being intermarried with uh, Roman Catholics from the Protestant faith. Um, in, in one instance, uh, it was the, the, the mother who was Catholic. Uh, she never liked uh, her, her son attending any, any Protestant meetings, but he did from time to time. Uh, he's a close friend of mine. And it so happened that uh, that friend was molested by a Catholic priest. And... Uh, he he uh, had uh, he became I think a homosexual. Um, I hadn't spoken to him like I knew him when I was a very young young boy. I, I didn't speak to him after about the age of twelve. But I heard that this happened to him, and he had some homosexual relationships. Um, he was married. He eventually got married to a girl, and uh, had a child. And uh, for some reason, um, the woman used her female rights um, to somehow uh, stop the, 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 the man from seeing his, his, his daughter or his uh, son and uh, I know that he went with another girl and had a child and um, it, it, it seemed that uh, at that time he had financial difficulties and then he, he hung himself that's just one example of I'm sure many hundreds of thousands of examples around the world where um, I'm using obviously the Catholic uh, Church here as an obvious example of um, basically uh, really taking advantage of children and uh, even females. Um, it seems that uh, the nuns and uh, monks and priests, um, there's been various areas, for instance in England, uh, that uh, there's been a nunnery and there's been a monk um, place where they actually make Buckfast, down in Buckfast Abbey, they, they create this wine called Buckfast, and that's how they finance um, their prayers to God, and they keep, stay alive um, by selling this Buckfast wine, it's a red tonic wine they call it, but it, it makes a lot of people um, around this area in Glasgow alcoholics, and unfortunately, you know, a few of my friends still um, actually drink uh, that wine, tonic wine, fast at the weekends and uh, some of them are demon possessed and uh, but they just don't know the presence of God they've not had the presence they've not had the chance to get right with the Lord or really really drive at the, the presence of God get on their knees and uh, repent of their sin so that God can deal with uh, any demonic thing in them this giving them the addiction to drink uh, the alcohol or whatever it may be um, this is the stranglehold, of course, uh, that, that uh, these 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 authorities or these spiritual authorities and um, other institutions have us in. You know, the Rothschilds financed the suffragette movement back in the 60s. Um, you know, going back to what I was talking about there, about the nunnery. Uh, well, it's, it, down in England this happens, that um, basically both places... Uh, both places were actually um, dug up in um, research for ar archaeological um, finds. It was se several hundred years old, maybe 
almost a thousand years old and they actually discovered that buried in, in the banks of the river were many 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 hundreds hundreds of unborn uh, sorry of children who had been born and then obviously had been killed and they were actually buried in the banks of this river and they thought that basically the monks and the nuns had been having sex the nuns had been having children and obviously after the 10th century um, they couldn't marry so um, what they actually did was kill these children kill these infant children and and bury them in the banks of the river um, what, what they do what they used to do in Ireland it used to be very well known in Dublin um, that when they did this the priests or the monks had relations with uh, the nuns that they actually sent these children to uh, places like America um, where uh, where they were adopted basically they were known as just orphans um, but these children were actually the product of relations between priests and nuns um, so this is going into the sort of slavery now I want to touch on that um, when the Reformation actually started in S Scotland and uh, other parts of the United Kingdom what the Roman Catholic Empire did was actually either they straight away killed these Christians who were known to have um, or come into contact with copies of the Bible but if they were in uh, their you know, own, own Protestant revival if they were found to be worshipping God what these people uh, happened to them they actually were put in jail and many of them were shipped across to the United States as slaves. Now, m many people don't know about that. They know about the black slavery and what happened to the black Christians. And obviously, it's always Christians that are targeted. Um, you know, black people, please don't feel as, as if it's a racist thing. It's not. It's because um, the gospel has reached your shores in West Africa. And uh, that's one of the reasons that um, the empire took advantage of um, you know your poor status in the world your poor position in the world and shipped you off to the Caribbean and many islands but it was, wasn't just the black slaves there were actually Scottish slaves as well and there were actually British um, and Irish um, white slaves that were sent across to the Caribbean as you know if you go to Barbados and different places around there you still see um, there are white slaves which is a uh, kept very very silent there's no um, real big um, uproar about that it was just about the black slaves for some strange reason but there were um, a fair percentage I would say of white slaves uh, within these islands and the United States Empire um, Britain obviously had a slightly better record with slaves as many many uh, white Protestant Christians stood up and uh, one of them who was a Scotsman went to North Carolina I believe he went to uh, Charlotte and the market town there where they used to sell the slaves and uh, he preached the gospel and it was believed that he put up money to actually set a lot of these slaves free and uh, I'll show you some pictures about when I was there several years ago uh, preaching the gospel with my, my prayer partner and friend uh, Heidi and uh, you know what I managed to do is at least read out the Bible but I got a lot of prophecy um, when I was talking with my friend there Isaiah and it was about um, America having a black president and that was I prophesied that back I think it was 2006 so that was through the spirit of the Lord you know it's only when we're actually serving God and um, we're doing what God is wanting us to do we do get revelation we do get prophecy uh, we speak the word of God and sometimes it's not dreams and visions we get sometimes it's the pure word of God that comes out of our mouth and uh, hallelujah and uh, we rebuke Satan and we bind any spirit in Yeshua's name today which would cause any um, division any of these seven sins which are, are mentioned in Proverbs seven deadly sins are all caused by a spirit and uh, so you know, I'd like to, with the help of my maybe my brothers, Christian brother and sisters, especially, I could make a video about rebuking these spirits. Um, and uh, as we know, Daniel had a prayer life uh, in the mornings. He got very early, so did David, is believed. He got very early and praised God in the mornings. And uh, you know, I used to song 
uh, sing songs um, in Africa, praise songs every morning when I walked at the rehab. And again, this invitation to my subscribers, if you want to go out and experience mission work out in West Africa, you're very, very welcome. You will feel very welcome there as well. One of the songs we used to sing was uh, In the morning, early in the morning, in the morning I shall bow and praise the Lord. Um, something like that, right? <laughs> and uh, there were some songs I used to sing when I was a, went to a charismatic place in Glasgow. Uh, it was a uh, Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for loving me. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for loving me. You went to Calvary, and there you died for me. Thank you, Lord, for loving me. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for loving me. So that's just two praise songs. Um, if you go to the rehab center, you will actually be um, praising God at least for an hour. You go up about half six or seven o'clock and be praising God and preaching for at least five, ten minutes in the morning until you go out in the afternoon. You'll be preaching on the street. You'll be going to church every day. You'll be counseling you'll be serving God all the time. So I hope that this is uh, an encouragement to you um, about relationships. Um, we must be in good contact and relationship with God first and that spreads out into all the relationships. And the Lord told me recently that I have to be equally yoked in all my relationships. I was just reflecting on these words this morning. I thank the Lord that he did give me his pure words and um, you know, um, that I must obviously uh, adhere to his word and I, I pray the same for your life as well uh, you know uh, Paul the apostle was an idealist so um, he certainly um, was always wanting Christians to get together and uh, praise God but actually organize themselves so they can go out and evangelize and things uh, I met one person a few days ago who was very interested when I was out preaching and um, what a the, the flyers I was giving out so uh, I think her name uh, was oh what was her name I forget her name again but if I remember her name I'll leave her name in the toolbar and uh, you can pray for the woman and uh, I believe she's called to evangelize Jehovah Witnesses she's going through a little bit of a time with her family a family relationship she's been persecuted um, so we'll uh We'll, we'll say a prayer for her as well today that we get the pure word of God in our life and that we take care of uh, any sin that we have in our life and uh, that we just let the Holy Spirit clean us out, cleanse us and uh, you know outwardly how, how we look, the clothes we wear you know, should be natural should be natural, shouldn't dye our hair we shouldn't really be ma wearing makeup if you're uh, a woman um the Apostle Paul wrote about that. I mean, certainly you can uh, present yourself in its various ways. You can present yourself, which are not actually probably commonly practiced today. But the, uh, I believe that um, you, the Holy Spirit will show you that if, 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 if you're a woman. you Maybe you can apply some makeup, but uh, not to overly do it. And uh, obviously to, to, to dress conservatively as well. Um, we should try and do that, man and woman, we should try and do that um, because obviously there are spirits of lusts out there and uh, different types of spirits of uh, envy and pride and all kind of things that we have to overcome. So may the Lord bless you today and thanks for listening. <laughs>